Oh, let's do that again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good to be here tonight. We appreciate everybody coming and uh, being in the service of the Lord. We're so thankful tonight that God is, He's just really blessing our country, isn't He? I mean, I know we can all talk about the negativity uh, going on in the world and all like that, but God's sending the sunshine. There is some things that's pretty faithful, ain't it? Amen. I was reading the book of Job, and he was talking about, I believe, maybe the psalm. It was in the book of Psalms. And uh, he, here's the way he described the sun. He said, Lord, your son, who hath made the tabernacle for the sun? He said, when he rises, it's like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber. Praise the Lord. That's pretty good, ain't it? Amen. God's blessed us with sunshine, and he's blessed us with rain and made all the, uh, the yellow grass green and the trees that are coming forth. Uh, I, and you know, you take, it takes the eyes of a Christian tonight to see that. It certainly does. It takes the eyes of a Christian tonight. And I'm so thankful that the Lord has given me eyes. If you're saved tonight, he's given you eyes to see the things that the world is just slipping right on by. They don't see it. But thank God we that are saved tonight, we see them. Amen. And we know them. So it's, it's prayer meeting night tonight. And we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And we appreciate this good attendance uh, on Wednesday night. We've got some folks that's on vacation traveling. We want to pray for them. The Lord give them uh, safety, and God would watch over them. Uh, Brother Jacob, he's preaching tonight. Uh, I think maybe at his grandfather's. We want to pray the Lord would help him and uh, touch him and, and, and move there for them tonight in their service. And then, of course, we want to always pray for our sick folk and always our lost folk. Amen. So if you've got a special request, you give it in at this time. Uh, we'll go to the Lord in prayer and try to pray. Be sincere as we can. All right, all right. Let's remember that request. Someone else tonight. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's wonderful. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I have some special unspoken requests I'm asking the Lord to give me wisdom with, and God would help me and move uh, in the, in our situation. So if y'all would remember us when you pray tonight, I'd appreciate it. Somebody else tonight got a request. All right, let's remember this request tonight. Anybody else? Amen, Sister Amy. Amen. All right. Who was that, Ethel? Oh, okay. All right, let's remember that request. Sister Linda, go ahead. Okay, remember that when you pray. We always want to pray for our lost folks, don't we? That's the most important thing in my life is my lost family. Amen. That's more important my job and everything else. Our lost people tonight that's, that needs God. Anybody else before we pray? Amen. All right, praise the Lord. He's a prayer answering God. Amen. He is a prayer answering God. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody else tonight? All right. Sister Geraldine's son, Brother Johnny's children. Anybody else? All right. Praise the Lord. We certainly will do that. Anybody else tonight?
I tell you folks, the most important thing in this whole wide world, uh, I preached uh, Shannon's, I guess, stepmom's uh, funeral the other day, and, and I told in the funeral, the, the main question that we always ask, and all you that are saved know what I'm going to say, one thing we want to know, was they ready to meet God? Was they ready to meet God? And uh, uh, we read the scripture uh, out of Ecclesiastes. The Bible said that no man knows that time. Uh, we don't know that time when we're leaving here. I, I, preach, I preach every uh, funeral of every age it can be preached. Teenagers, 20s, 30s, right down the line. We don't know that time. But we do know that our time is always according to what the Lord said. So if you're saved tonight, you know the Lord Jesus Christ. You're in a car wreck tomorrow. You're in a, and you leave this world. Or you go home tonight and you have a, a heart attack. How you go, how, what's it going to be? I mean, where are you going to wake up at? You're going to wake up somewhere. Where are you going to be at? Well, if you know the Lord Jesus is your Savior tonight, thank God you, 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 don't, you don't have to uh, go crazy and worry yourself to death about that. That's called conviction. That's when I was under conviction. I'm glad tonight to be able to look to my family without batting my eye and tell every one of them, if I leave tonight, I know who he is. He knows who I am. I'm ready to be offered up. I, I don't want to die. No, I don't think nobody wants to die. But I do know one thing, I'm going to die. And when I do die, I want to be ready to meet my maker. I want to be ready. So if you're here tonight and you're playing church and you haven't got that relationship with God that you need, amen, that personal relationship, it's personal. Hey, you may not have a husband, but you've got a Savior. You may not have a wife. You may not have a mother. You may not have this. You may not, but you've got a Savior. And I feel like I can say on behalf of every situation in here, if you know the Lord, there's nobody more personal in your life than the Lord is. Amen? If he's not that personal God to you, I'm, I'm sorry you don't know him and all you are is just a church member. Right. I'm sorry, I am. He's the best friend that ever was. Amen. There's nobody like the Lord. Nobody. Nobody like Jesus tonight. Amen. Nobody like the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm so tickled to be in his family. Yeah. Amen. To know my name's in the book of life. Yeah. To know that I've got a reservation made over yonder in the other world. Bless God tonight. If you're saved tonight, you I know a lot of you probably, probably like me. I come in all drooped over and tired, been complaining all evening because it's so tired and wore out. But when I think about what's over yonder, amen. When I think about what's waiting on me on the other side, Paul said it best. He said, for me to die would be far better. Amen. It's going to be far better for the saints of God. Now, where do you, when you leave here, where do you, where do you, where do you what happens to you? Do you think you see the inside of a grave? Do you think you go to a casket? No, don't worry about that. Amen. You'll never see the inside of a casket. No, when you die, if you know the Lord Jesus, here's what this black back book said. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Well, somebody said, where's the Lord at? I don't care. I don't care where he's at. Amen. I'm not going to try to argue over some of the craziest things people argue about. I just know I'm going to be present with the Lord. Paradise, heaven, hell, in the belly of a whale. I don't care. As long as I'm with the Lord, that's all that matters, thank God, to know that I'm with Jesus. Amen. David of old said, I will not be satisfied until I awake in thy likeness, O God. Amen. So uh, I was, I've been reading the Job, and you get a little few things as you read it. And Job said, your wrinkles, it's a testimony against you. Amen. You know what that means, don't you? That means you're getting ready for another world. Yeah. Amen. Well, praise God. I didn't know I was going to say all that. Anybody else, let's come pray and I'll hush. Come on. Praise the Lord. Everybody can. We're going to pray for uh, Hannah tonight. We're going to anoint her for Haley. And ask the Lord to just touch her. We all know she testified Wednesday. God's blessed her with a little seed inside there. Amen. We're going to ask the Lord just to watch over her. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Touch her in her disease and her back. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pour a little bit. Bring the to the Lord tonight. Dear Heavenly Jesus. Oh God, in the name of the Lord, we thank you tonight, God, for your blessings. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we love you with all of our heart. 
We pray tonight, God, in the name of the Lord God of heaven, Lord, that you touch Haley tonight, Lord. We've done pray for her, God. Lord, we believe in you, God. We know you're going to take care of her, God. Lord, I believe that with all of my heart, God. I believe, God, at the time of life, God, that we'll see a little baby. And, God, Lord, we'll rejoice. And, Lord, we'll clap our hands and thank you, God, for the gift of life. Then I pray for my granddaughter tonight, Lord, that you touch her. I ask you, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, just to work miracles, God. Now, Lord, I believe we can call upon you over anything and everything tonight, God. I pray tonight, God, in the name of the Lord, that you work and, God, that you move. Father, tonight, Lord, there's no God like our God tonight. Now, God, there's none, Lord, that can be touched, Lord, with the feeling of our infirmities. Lord, there's nobody like you tonight, Jesus. And, God, I appreciate you tonight, Lord, for saving me. I thank you tonight, Lord, for the joy that we have in serving of and being a Christian tonight, Lord, and having joy. And now tonight, God, we just ask you to bless this meeting tonight. And God, give us wisdom in the service. I just pray tonight, God. Oh, God, that the name of the Lord would be lifted up. And the name of Jesus, God, would be edified tonight. Lord, thy word, Lord, is like a silver tried in the furnace. Seven times, God, it's been tried, uh, but yet, God, it's pure, and it's a pure word. And, God, we're thankful for that. Now, move upon every request. Uh, God, every desire tonight, Lord, you seek the hearts of men and women in here tonight. I pray, God, if there's anything uh, that's not pleasing to you, Lord, that you deal with that, God, and help us all tonight to walk in the countenance of thy will, God. We love you tonight. Thank you, God, for salvation. Thank you, God, for what you do. In Jesus' name, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, the Lord is good, and his mercy endureth forever. I, 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 so I don't like to pray in the same prayer place all the time. So I moved my prayer place, and I found me a new place to pray, and I've been going there and talking to the Lord. That's where I go and talk to Him and have my communion with Jesus. And uh, the Lord, I think I, I think I didn't, I think I'll just share with you what the Lord has laid on my heart to do. And I told you Sunday, uh, God spoke to me and told me to do something different, and I hadn't ever done it, but I thought I'd tell you about it tonight. And hey, man, it's a uh, it's, you, I feel like maybe some of y'all may think I'm crazy, but I guess God's people really are a little crazy, ain't they? Amen. They, they are a little crazy. Well, I was praying Sunday morning, and uh, I was asking the Lord to help me, and uh, the Lord just laid it on my heart uh, to uh, go and stand on a stump and uh, read the book of Psalms. And uh, so I've been trying to do that. I've just been going up there, and, and uh, first time I've done it, I felt like a complete fool. I did. I read the first 10 chapters of Psalms. and uh, But man, I went up there last night and I had such an audience. Uh, praise the Lord. The little birds was a, was a, uh, was a lightning on the, on, the, uh, on the tree limbs, Brother Johnny, and the trees were clapping their hands for joy. And I started out reading. I wasn't reading too awful loud, but as I kept on reading, I was getting louder and louder. And, uh, man, I got over there till there's no God like our God. And you're fearfully and wonderfully made. And I mean, I just read into the woods. and uh, But I tell you what, the possums and the coons, and I mean, I don't know how they are in your place, but they sanctified up there in my place. Amen. Birds and the eagles and the buzzards was flying over and the crows. Now, that sounds a little silly, don't it? But you know what? I felt the Lord in that. I felt God in that. I thank God that he's still a speaking to me. I do. I, I do. How long has it been since the Lord talked to you? He said, "My no." Somebody said, "Preacher, does the Lord really hear you? And can you really hear Him?" Well, you better ask Him what He means when He said, "My sheep know My voice." So I, I'm I'm up to chapter twenty. I'm up to chapter twenty. I don't guess I'll get to go up today, but I, I, tomorrow I'm gonna go back up there and I'm gonna start at twenty one, brother Rodney. Hey, Amen. I'm just gonna read to the woods. Praise the Lord, y'all. How many y'all think I'm crazy? Praise the Lord. Amen. I think all y'all crazy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I appreciate you tonight. I do. So it's 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 the it's not the it's not the, the things that make sense. 
in this world. It's the things that maybe don't make sense that God uses. I told Brother Brandon I had some scriptures on my heart, and I've been praying for all the young converts and those that hadn't been saved very long, and I, I thought maybe we might do some teaching tonight, and I don't know yet what we'll do, but we want everybody to obey God. We want you to obey the Lord, give you liberty tonight, amen, to testify and to give you strength, to help you tonight. Amen. Good number here on Wednesday night. Thank the Lord. The word of the Lord is the most precious thing we've got. Oh, this book right here has got so much power. Amen. It's not the preacher, but it's the word. So if somebody tonight got a song, a testimony, something you need to do, praise the Lord, you just do it tonight. Anybody? All right. Amen. All right. All right. Somebody else got a testimony? Nobody else? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want you to feel your liberty tonight now. Amen. Say something for the Lord. You're definitely welcome tonight. We're crazy people, ain't we, Sharon? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us, that's right. That's right. Praise the Lord. Beats no sour puss, don't it? I've always said crazy people are happy people. Let me tell you something I witnessed with my own eyes. Witnesses with my own eyes. I was in Marshall, North Carolina. There was a man that was uh, had stood up one night and he was talking about strange things that God had told him to do. And uh, he said that he was out there cutting timber and uh, he was a preacher. And he said that, uh, uh, he said the Lord, he got down to pray and he said the Lord told him to stand up on that stump and preach on John 3.16. He said there wasn't another soul nowhere. He said there wasn't nobody around. And he said, I got up, and he said, with everything I got in me, he said, I preached just like the, the woods was full of people. And he said, I preached probably for 45 minutes as hard as I can preach. Well, while that man was testifying, there was a man that got up in the back of the church. Now, you listen to what I'm telling you, folks. It pays to obey God. And that man got up in the back of the church and come up there and was bawling and went and grabbed that preacher and hugged that preacher. I mean, just like, I mean, I'm talking about crying in a way like you ain't never seen a man cry. He said, preacher, he said, I was in them woods that day. I had a gun and I was ready to kill myself. I done had it cocked and was ready to put in my mouth to kill myself. And he said, I heard somebody a preacher. On, on, in the woods and said I draw closer to that and said right there in them woods he said I've never seen you in my life I'm talking about something that went 20 years on down the road and never met the man until that night now you talking about a meeting you talking about some crying that night some of you that don't ever cry I wish you'd have been there that night amen them dams would have busted Praise God. Amen. There'd been tears come out of your eyes and watch that precious man. Amen. Find that woman or find that preacher and hug his neck and thank him. So you don't never know when somebody might be listening to you. Amen. Somebody else tonight got something. Amen. 
morning, sister. Praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody else tonight got something you'd like to say for the Lord. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Johnny. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Amen. All right, is everybody heart clear? I'm just going to teach about 35, 40 minutes, and then, amen, I, I just, I'd like to teach tonight. Is that all right? Everybody turn with us in First Peter, chapter number 1. First Peter chapter number 1. Of course, I ain't no teacher until the Lord anoints me, and that's the same way we're singing and preaching and everything else. And uh, I wish that I could say something I really do. I wish that I could say, because I know some of you don't ever pick your Bible up. I know you. I know these folks like that. They don't ever pick your Bible up. You don't ever read it. And I, I just, I just don't know what to say. I don't know what to, how to explain it to you. Uh, it's like trying to drive a car uh, with no drive line in it. Uh, it just, it's, it's just hard. It's hard. And uh, the word of the Lord is the most precious thing. Uh, your wife's going to die. Your husband's going to die. Your children's going to leave you. But this word of God, if you've got it in your spirit, there's something about this Bible right here. And, uh, I, and, and I know I can preach till I turn green and, and even fuss at you uh, for not doing it, for not reading it. But I, I, I would you, you just humor me in this. Would you just ask God in your daily prayers? Lord, Brother Jason said it about me last night. I, I just ain't got a desire to read, and I really, uh, he says that I'm missing out on so much in the church and so much in my walk with God. Would you just help me, Lord, uh, give me a desire to read because uh, the Bible said man can't live by bread alone. Uh, you can't do it. You And you have got to make yourself, you've got to make yourself do this now. Now, if you're serious about living a Christian life, and there's so many folks that go to church, and that's all they do. They, you know, they go to church. And we've got some folks that, that's never faithful to come to church, and then we've got some folks that always faithful to go to church. But when it all comes down to it, uh, your daily walk with God and your relationship with Him, that's the most important thing, whether you go all the time or you just go some of the time. Amen. Your walk with Christ is everything. So please, please tonight, uh, try to beg God to give you a relationship with the Lord. Let me let me explain. Let me let me share with you one thing, uh, and then we'll read the scriptures. Last night I I wanted my boy John. There's a scripture that I read the other night when I was reading the Bible, brother Brandon, that tore my guts out. It tore me up, and I even when I read it, I said, God, how can this possibly be? And it was in the book of Judges, Sister Chelsea. Chapter number 2, and it talked about the children of Israel dying, and the Bible said the next generation did not know God. How in one generation could a nation, a people, forget God? In one generation. How could? Now, you're talking about the generation that the waters parted. You're talking about the generation that seen the miraculous power of God. How could that possibly be? And then I realized how easy it was. You know how it is? Mommies and daddies letting up on their children. Mommies and daddies. So I, I brought my boy up there last night. He's, he, Caitlin's gone. He's the only boy there at the house. And we read to him this scripture. And I said, John, your daddy, when I die, if you don't let, if you don't keep the standards, and you don't keep the things that we've committed unto you, in one generation it's gone. That ain't as hard now as I thought it was. 
I, when I first read that, I thought that was impossible. You see, preacher, you, you, I mean, look at your mom and dad's life and see if the blessing of God is there. Look how far that the church has got from the church of yesterday. There was a day, there was a day that nobody bought and sell on Sunday. Nobody did that. I mean, it just wouldn't. It just wouldn't, it wouldn't right. I mean, it was the, I mean, thou shalt not kill, that's in y'all's commandments, right? And thou shalt not commit adultery, and thou shalt not steal, that, that's it, right? Thou shalt honor the Sabbath day. Is that in y'all's too? So, I mean, I mean, you stand up and tell me about it. I want to know. Where, where, did, where, did, where, where did it become okay? I mean, I won't know. I mean, really, I'm interested in it. I, I want to know when did it go? When did it become okay? But you see, I remember, I remember letting Hannah and Julie on Sunday night. Some of the kids down here wanted to go out and eat, and I thought to myself, you know, they you know, trying to raise children. I just don't want to be so strict. Don't want to make them hate me. Don't want to make them like that, and just give in a little bit. I know it ain't popular, praise God. I know it ain't popular. I'm just telling you how quick in one generation, yeah. in one generation, where a generation used to uh, see uh, sisters in dresses and men wearing uh, uh, clothes. I talked to a boy the other day. He said, I went to church to a place somewhere in Lebanon last year. He said, everybody over there had shorts on. He said, even the pastor. Now, they may be closer to God than I am. I hope they are. But I can tell you one thing, it sure has fell away in one generation. In one generation, every bit of this can all just slip away. When I first read that scripture in Judges, I thought, God, that's impossible. Then I got to thinking about my own family. My own. I'm not preaching about you, I'm preaching about me. How easy it is, how easy that it is for us just to give in and say, okay, just go ahead, go ahead. And now... It's the most common thing in the world. People, you, even sinners, even sinners years ago used to not. Well, preacher, that's under the law. Well, let me tell you something. Before there was a mosaical law in Genesis chapter 1, God rested on the Sabbath day and, and honored it and, kept, and made it holy before Moses was born, before there was a law. You say, well, Sunday's not the Sabbath day. But it's the day Paul knew that there'd be people say that. And Paul knew that. So he said, he that regardeth the day, let him regard the day unto the Lord. Yeah. So Sunday, Sunday is not, it's the first day of the week. But it's our day as the church of the living God that we honor. It's a day that we set aside, amen, for the Lord's day. We come to church and used to be, and I've told it before about my dad. I remember my dad drinking there used to be a time that he'd have to go to another county to buy beer on Sunday because they didn't sell it here in Washington County. Even the government recognized and knowed that there was a day of reverence to the holy God of heaven. But in one generation, and whose fault is it? It ain't them kids. No, it's M-O-M and D-A-D. That's, that's where it's at, folks. Praise the Lord. Well... Y'all, amen. Ready for me to teach? <laughs> amen. Let's don't let it slip. I told my boy last night, I said, son, you keep this alive. You stand up for what's right. You have to be criticized. There'll be a, you have to have buddies that'll laugh at you and mock at you and say, come on, come on, come on. And it'll be hard when you're young, but you stand for God when you're young and watch what God will do for you as you grow older in the Lord. You'll do that, amen. All right, in, in uh, First Peter, Chapter 1, the Bible said, Peter, apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. Now, Peter, of course, is doing nothing more than simply giving an introduction. Now, it's 7.37. Give me about 20 minutes and we'll be done. I just want to put some good scriptures in, in the hearts of especially some of these young converts. Amen. And I hope that the old saying is, uh, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, I hope that some of these old Christians, you can teach them some new things because none of us in here has learned it all. We all stand room for growing in the grace and the knowledge. 
he introduced himself with this. He said, The Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, under obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. They have one type of people that would understand that terminology, and that's the people of God. Yeah. You talk like that out there in the world, they're going to look at you, scratch your head and say, what did you say? But now when Peter, when he come across with this terminology, the people that was hearing him speak this, they knew what he was talking about. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, folks, I'm going to tell you what every one of us has got that's saved. If you ain't saved, you ain't got it. I mean, it's just the way it is. The Bible said we have a treasure in the earthen vessel. You know what that treasure is? It's called hope. It's called hope. Now, there's a man down in North Carolina. His granddaughter had an overdose. She died not just not the way that you'd have a normal overdose. I guess she took some kind of a medicine. Well, it's Dale Wheeler's daddy. And his granddaughter uh, took some kind of medicine. Brother Terry, in the doctor terms, they said she died at her feet, and it went all the way up her body. She died with a blanket. Look, it's right here over. But she'd been living a wicked life. And I'll never forget that man uh, telling me over and over again. He said, Brother Jason, he said, the way she lived here and the way she lived here, he said, no doubt, no doubt she, she's probably in hell. He said, everybody will tell me she's probably in hell. He said, but I've got hope. He said, I had a dream about her. And he said, I got hope. Maybe, maybe she made it to heaven. He said, now, tell me the truth. Preach me anything you want to preach me, but don't try to take my hope away. He said, hope's all I got. And I'll tell you what, hope's a pretty good thing. It's a pretty good thing tonight. Now, I don't want, I don't want my children to die like that. And I don't want to die like that. It's pretty, it's pretty well signed contract the way somebody would leave like that. But the doctor said that she may have had some a time to think their daddy and mom was just about went crazy and had to go talk to the doctor about how the death was and said, maybe, just maybe. And who knows? But see, he's got hope. Well, well, you look at it, and you say, well, now there ain't no hope. She's died lost. She's, she's gone to hell. But now, ma'am, papas are looking at it and saying, you're probably right, but I've got hope. Now, Peter is talking to the people of God that's got this hope inside of him. You remember when I told you about the first of the service tonight, when you die, when you die, if you die when you got Jesus Christ, you've got hope tonight. And what is the hope? It's the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That we're not going to, we're not going to say, I, I told over at the funeral the other day, the Lord brought it back to my mind, there's a colored woman in the Greendale Nursing Home, and every time that I'd see her and have service, I'd forget every time, and before I'd leave, I'd say, I can't remember her name, but I'd call her name, and I'd say, goodbye, sister. She'd come, she'd grab my hand, she'd stick that arm, she'd say, don't you say that, preacher. I said, do what? She said, don't you say goodbye unless you mean it. She said, it's only so long for now. And brothers and sisters, if we got Christ, it's only when we die and leave here, it's only so long for now. Yeah. We've got hope, Brother David. If you die tonight, I've got hope I'm going to see you again. John Thomas, if you die tonight, I've got hope I'm going to see you. The world ain't got that hope. Right. People sitting in a church that's just got religion. 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 Christy's uh, brother, I overheard him talking Sunday. And... Uh, He's, and I'm not just hampering on this tonight, but I heard, overheard him uh, Sunday, and he was talking, he's doing some work for a man. And he asked him, he said, uh, he said that uh, he's running a track hoe. And he said that, uh, uh, he said they, he needed to work on Sunday. And he said, he said, I know that they're religious folks. And while he said that, I thought, well, I'm, I'm glad I'm not just religious. I mean, there's a lot of religious folks, ain't they? There's a lot of folks that's got a church membership and amen like that. But the Bible said the Lord knoweth them that are his. Yeah. See, there's a lot of children in here, Daniel. Amen. They are. There's a lot of children. But I can go lay my hand on my children. I know where my children's at tonight. I can go lay my hand. And if I laid my hand on Nevaeh, she's not mine. She don't belong to me. That's David and Sarah. And the Lord's saying, I know my children. 
I know, well, I've been a member for 35 years. Congratulations. That don't mean you're a child. Amen. I've been baptized and I put money in every Sunday. Good job. That's great. But that don't mean you belong to the Lord. The Lord said, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And the foundation of God stand ashore. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ to depart from iniquity. That's the seal, my friend. We don't like sin no more. We hate sin. We hate the works that spotted uh, by flesh. Look at verse number three or four. He said, to an inheritance that's incorruptible and undefiled and fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you. Now, thank God we've got something waiting on us on the other side of life. It's an incorruptible crown. This world down here don't have no understanding of incorruptibleness. My body don't under, have no understanding of incorruptibleness. It's a getting old. It's a waxing older and older. Some of you, you're slowing down more and more and more. But Paul, Peter said, blessed be the God and Father who's given us this hope to obtain an inheritance. There's something waiting on the other side. You ought to clap your hands and Amen. Jump up and shout every once in a while and say, thank you, Lord. Amen. And when you're, when you're young, you don't think about death. When you're young, you don't think about things like this. But as you get a little older and you stand over the graves of many and you, and you preach the, uh, uh, the funerals of many, many people and you read the obituaries and you see it's the buddies that you went to school with, then your mind starts thinking about death. Thank God that we've got that hope. Are you glad for that hope tonight? He said, who are kept by the power of God. Now, I'd like to ask you a question. Sister Amy, I just think, how many years have you been saved? <clears throat> 47 years, that's a long time. Listen to what this said. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Now, it's the power of God that's kept her 47 years. I mean, what else in life could you possibly be involved in and stay with that long? I mean, I try everything. I get hobbies and I do them for a while and then I quit. You know what I'm saying? 47 years, is that what you said? 41 years. And the power of God. How long you been saved, Johnny? 26 years. I mean, everything else in life just about is just... It runs its course, don't it? I mean, you know, when you're young, I, I like to deer hunt, I like to do this, I like to do that. I mean, hobbies and all like that. But now, there's something that's kept me in the house of God. I mean, there's something that, when I get up on Wednesday night, I'm not flipping a coin to see if I post to come or not. I mean, I know, brother, it ain't even a question. Every Wednesday night of my life since I got saved, every Sunday morning, Sunday night, I mean, I just, I, I just know this is where I belong. This is my home. This is where I try to tend me. And he said, who are kept by the power of God. You ain't standing tonight by your own self. You're here tonight only by the power of God. You would have done went back to drinking. You'd have done went back to the fornicating and the adultery and all of that right there. The power of God's what kept you. You're begotten by the word and you're kept by the word. That's what the Bible said. He said, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are heaviness through manifold temptations. Now, I'd like to ask you a question. You don't have to raise your hand. But how many of you are tempted in ways now that you've never been tempted before? And you're facing things and you're fighting battles that maybe five years ago you were laughed at, but tonight it's absolutely killing you. And, and the Bible said, he said, the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perish with tribe of fire that you may be found to praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. God's a trying our faith. David said, God, take the reins of my heart. Deliver me from presumptuous sins, God. You know what a presumptuous sin is? It's a sin that's premeditated. You think about what you're going to do and you go do it. You say to Christians, do stuff like that. Well, I don't know. Have y'all? 
Have you ever done something you know wasn't right and you went ahead and did it? Well, I'll raise my hand and say I have. Amen. I have. I've done things that I know that wasn't right. I stepped over the boundary of the Holy Ghost and God whipping me out the whole time and I know, but every time I've done it, I regretted it and I had to go back and beg God to forgive me for it and I felt like a dog just as soon as I committed the act. Yeah. How about you tonight? Now what bothers me is is when you commit the act and you don't feel no remorse about it. I mean, when you do wrong, do you feel guilty? I mean, when you when you do wrong, can are you one of them people? I mean, I've raised four children and and, and adopted Christy Rowe and had her in her home. Now we're raising Caitlin and and had a Christian school and pastored and Amen. I've seen people, learned people, and and all like that. They some people that can talk to you like a dog and call you every name in the book and roll over and go to sleep like nothing wrong. I'm not one of them. I can't do that to my wife. I can't do that to my neighbor. Y'all getting so well, you was quite to begin with, but praise the Lord. I mean, how can you do that? How can you do that? Well, I don't care. It wasn't my fault. That's funny. It ain't never been your fault since you come out of your mama. That's amazing. Amen. It ain't never been your fault. Praise God. Amen. Listen, we, we've got to have a conscience. And if your face are being tried, me and Brother Rodney was talking yesterday at the gas station, at the gas station and he was talking about how uh, temptations and many things was fighting him. They, see, when you get saved, when, you, when you're in the world, you're going down North Fork. And the currents are going with you. But when you get saved, just as soon as you get saved, you turn right around and you start going up the current. Now, if you're looking for an easy way out, and, and please don't quit, but all you got to do is turn around and go back with the world, but the world's going to send you to hell. And, and Peter said, don't think it now strange concerning the temptations that try you. And I got news for all of you. Your temptations, as you grow in Christ, your temptations are going to grow. Paul said, uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. And as you graduate, as you graduate, get stronger and stronger and stronger, your temptations are going to come stronger and stronger. You're going to have to fight the devil till you die. That's what I'm telling you. It ain't going to be no days off. The Bible said Satan left uh, Jesus for a season after he uh, was tempted in the wilderness. He said he left him for a season. And there is times that it's not as hard, seemingly, as it is others. But you be well assured you've got an enemy that's watching you. He's, he's trying to tempt you. And on behalf of that, he'll tempt you. And then your own flesh, that old devilish flesh that you carry around, amen, inside of you, it's going to try to bother you and try to pull you away from God. He said, think it not strange. Look at this. He said in verse 8, whom having not seen you love. Has anybody in here seen the Lord, but yet you love him? In whom though now you see him not, yet believing. You rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. I tell you, I believe tonight. I, I believe with everything in my possession that there's a place called heaven. And I believe with everything in my possession that God is seated on the right hand of majesty. Or God's on, on the throne. And on the right hand of majesty is his son, Jesus Christ. I believe that with everything in me tonight, every bit of fiber that's in my body, I believe that. And because I believe, I rejoice. Yeah. Amen. And you know why a lot of folks can't rejoice? It's because they don't believe. I'm sorry. Okay. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than that of gold, that it perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and the glory of our appearing of Jesus Christ. So Paul Peter is telling us that our faith is going to be tried with fire. He's going to try you to see. Now you look back in the book of Corinthians and you see that uh, he said in a house there's vessels of honor, vessels of dishonor. And that fire is going to try you to see what kind of vessel that you are as a child of God. But let me share something with you that uh, the Lord, I was a praying the other night in my prayer place and and uh, I just asked God, why, Lord, why? Just why? Why, God? And you know what the Lord told me? 
the Lord just spoke to me and said, Jason, all your life you've been preaching and hounding and trying to make sinners that's Christians that's, that's not saved live a Christian life. I probably didn't say that where you could understand that. Let me, re, let me redo that again. A sinner ain't going to live a Christian life. And you got church people that's in the church, amen. And here you got to preach to them and preach to them and preach to them. Stay out of the world, stay out of the world, love God, do this, do that, do that. And you got to call them all the time to find out where they're at. I mean, you got to just do this and do that. And the Lord said, Jason, you're trying to make something out of them that they're not. And what I'm trying to make out of them is a Christian. And until you're born into the family, I can't make you go to church. I can't make you read your Bible. Hey! I can't make you love your neighbor. When you get saved, the Spirit of God comes in your life. It leads you and guides you and directs you. Yeah. If something ain't in you or leading you and guiding you and directing you, you ain't saved. Uh, yeah. The Bible said or many are led by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. If it ain't inside of you, well, I don't care what you say. I don't care what you do. I mean, that ain't the Spirit of Christ, lady. That ain't the Spirit of Christ, man. That ain't the spirit of Jesus Christ tonight. Yeah. We that are saved, there's something inside of us. It's natural born to do these things. Naturally born. I told God, I said, God help me to take how many years I've got left of my preaching left and me quit hounding the real church over the people that's at the house of God that ain't even saved and trying to make them live Christian lives and they're not even saved. If somebody's got to hound you all the time about reading your Bible, if somebody's got to hound you all the time about going to church, if somebody's got to hound you all the time, amen, about loving your neighbor, yeah. about doing right, about having joy and love and peace and all of these things, if I've got to hound you all the time, I'm just going to tell you, you ain't got it. Amen. When you got it, the Bible said when a man loves God, it's known of him. When you've got God in your life, everybody will know it. There's nothing like serving Jesus. Oh, there's nothing like serving Jesus tonight. He's the greatest friend that all of us have ever had. All right. He said receiving the end of your faith. Well, praise God. Even the salvation of your souls. That's what I'm waiting on. It's he that endureth to the what? End. You mean you're one of them churches that believes you got to live right, die right, to get up right? We're one of them churches that believes the Bible's right. You've got to finish your course. Paul said it ain't to them that starts the race. But he said, having not seen yet, you rejoice, receiving the end of your faith. Man, I'm waiting to see what's at the end of this journey. I got a white stone over there, and ain't none of y'all knows what it is, but I got a name written in that stone. And he's going to call my name one day. That's my Lord at White Stones, Jesus. And he's going to, he knows who his youngins are. And he's going to call me one day. That's the end of my faith, an eternal home. Am I boring you to death? I mean, I tell me the truth. Praise God. I want you to, I want you, I ain't even got to the scriptures yet. I ain't got but like 14 minutes left. Amen. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently and prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified it before, beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Now what Peter was saying is that even though that Christ really wasn't mentioned in a great way, the Spirit of Christ which was in all of them prophets that came before Christ. Yeah. The Bible said, and that rock that led them in the wilderness, that rock was Christ. So even though he wasn't mentioned, now I want you to get this. He said, and testified and beforehand that the sufferings of Christ, that's something that nobody in the building wants to do. Nobody wants to suffer. Does anybody in here want to suffer? Nobody, but in order, in order, in order for us to know who he is, we have to suffer with him. We have to go through things. You have to lose your job. You have to, you have to, amen. That marriage has got to end in divorce. Are you with me? You've got to, I mean, 
that man uh, uh, had a testimony uh, down there the other night. That was Brother Dale Wheeler's dad as well. He's just a man that's got great wisdom. And he got up that night and he said, thank God for the mercy of God and the love of God. He said, it took some things precious out of my life. And I know Brother Terry, he was talking about his granddaughter. Think about some of you. You just lost your mom. and uh, Sister Amy uh, lost her mom and her dad. Sufferings. Sufferings in this world. But then you'll be suffered on the persecuted end. Your family will reject you. Your family will turn their back on you. You got to be sometimes even in the own church. Your own familiar friend whom, amen, that you went in the council and took sweet counsel in the house of God. That one that you thought would never betray you in church will betray you. Yeah. Why, preacher? Why? Why? Why does it happen? Well, when I was in my 20s, I asked the same question. When I was in my 30s, I asked the same question. I still didn't know the answer. Why did you take this person out of my life? Why did you do this? And why did you do that? And why did I have to go through this? And why did I have to fight this battle? And why did I get tempted in this way? And why, God, why? God said, Jason, all the things that's been happening to you and all the things that you've been going through is sufferings. And that's what Peter is saying. The Christianity life, it's full of sufferings. He don't want you to reign in this world because this world is coming to an end. But he's got a kingdom that's an everlasting kingdom. And he said, if you suffer with him now, so now in my 40s, I ain't got it figured out yet, but I'm starting to slow down a little bit and beginning to understand, God, I can't... One preacher, one preacher said it like this, and I probably won't get the details of it just right. He said that he laid hands and on his boy and he prayed for his son that he would be in the complete, perfect will of God and whatever it took God to get him there and whatever. And his boy was praying right beside of him and they was praying together. And he said a month later, his wife divorced him. And he said all through that, he said, I never questioned God. He said he broke his back and was laying on a hospital bed. He said all through them days and torments of that suffering, he said not one time did I question God. I knew it was God that was working in his life. See, that don't fit the equation of the world. You understand? That don't fit. But you will suffer. You will suffer. You will. Well, he did me wrong. Well, I mean, what do you want me to do about it? What do you want the church to do about it? Well, she, she said something bad to me. Okay. She lied on me. All right. Okay, what do you want us to do? He didn't do me right. I mean, okay, all right. Suffering. Yeah. Suffering. And God wants us to suffer with him. But it's in our nature. And I'm not throwing a rock and saying I got angel wings are coming out my sight. It's in our nature to want to get out of all the suffering that we want to do. I don't want to suffer. I want my I want my family. I want I mean I've got my my daughter. I want my daughter to have a good family. I want my husband or my son. I want him to have a good family. I want him to have children. And amen. Don't want nobody dying in a car wreck. And I want everybody to, to, to grow old happily ever after. And I want all that. If you know a family like that, you let me know where they're at. You let me know where they're at. They ain't nobody got it. They ain't a, they ain't a family in America can sit in a prayer meeting service tonight without requesting prayer about something that's wrong in their family's life. Yeah. Sufferings. God wants us to learn sufferings. He wants us to do it. I'm still scared to pray that. I'm not going to lie to you. I am. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still afraid. I've been reading the book of Joel. I ain't got, just give me just a few more minutes. Amen. I want to quit when you quit. That's when I want to quit. I want to quit when you quit. I've been reading the book of Job, and Job's friends came to him, the first two, and I won't try to pronounce their name. They spoke for the first 25 chapters. The third one said, I've, I'm a young man. I've let y'all have y'all's chance. They both blamed Job for his sin. They said, Job, you've sinned. No man's more righteous than God. The third man come along and said, I'm like, it's like wine in me. I'm about to bust. 
He said, I got to open my mouth. And he said, man, he said, you're not more than, uh, mortal man's not more than God. He, he went right up, fell right along on the bandwagon, got to accusing Job. But you know what Job was doing? He was suffering. He was suffering. He was suffering. Some of you in here, you ain't, I mean, you, you got a, you've got bad things that's happened to you. I wish I could write a check and make everything better. I wish I could fix that marriage. I wish I could fix that wife and make her love you and amen, cook and clean and fix that man, make him get up and go to work. And I wish I could take the drugs and take out uh, uh, your children. And I wish I could do all of that. But I can't do that. It's suffering. And you're in a world of suffering. And you're gonna and 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 you're gonna suffer more. Jason Nunley, you're gonna suffer. And your suffering ain't done yet. You're gonna suffer more and more and more. You're trying to scare me? I'm trying to wake you up. Reality's gonna check in one day. And Paul, Peter said, Amen, when he testified beforehand that the sufferings of Christ and the glory should follow. Thank God when the suffering's done. There's glory. After a while, we're going to reign with him. Every one of the disciples, every one of the disciples, I'm quitting right now. Every one of the disciples had to suffer. Mary, I never will forget four or five years ago, always on Christmas time, always just like everybody else, I like to go back and I like to read about the birth of Christ. And I was reading that night about Mary and Joseph and they was trying to find a, a place in the inn and, or trying to find a, a place to have the baby and, and right after they had the baby, Herod sent out the decree. And I remember thinking that night when I was reading that Bible, I thought, God, surely if somebody would have had it easy, Mary and Joseph would have had it easy. Surely to goodness they would have had it easy. The mother of Jesus? I mean, man, she ought to have been, she ought to have had 25 nurses of the best of the best. The Son of God was getting ready to be born. But no, sir. And then I realized, I thought, now, Lord, if Mary ain't going to have it easy, old Jason ain't going to have it easy. So quit complaining about the suffering. Quit murmuring about the suffering and learn to take it patiently. Knowing that the end and the trying of your faith and at the end of your suffering is glory. An un incorruptible seed. An incorruptible crown. Now, I ain't going to ask you tonight how many of you suffering. Amen. I ain't going to ask you doing that tonight. Some of you, I mean, just, just think about life and the people that you know, people that's not got a good home, people that ain't family, that ain't got good daddies. Why? Why'd that happen? And people that ain't got good mamas. Why? I seen my uncle all their life. All their life they've tried to get a child. They're in their 50s now. They, they tried to adopt. They've tried to do that. They've got close so many times and just never did get it. So finally they went through the the thing that, see, what you do, Sister Linda, they just want to have a baby, some a child, somebody to share with. They don't go to church. They don't know God. They just wanted a baby. Here just a few days ago, I mean, mama's on drugs in jail. Daddy's on drugs in jail. Ain't never had a baby. Ain't never had nothing to do with it. But all of a sudden, they want it back. And they've had that child now for probably two and a half years. My mom told me, my mom told me when the social services come that the, the baby was grabbing around my aunt's neck, literally screaming, and they had to pull her away to take her home. Been molested. Why, preacher? I mean, nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to face that. This ain't a, this ain't a good world. But, but when you know him and you read this book, you see how God can get glory out of everything. Yeah. Everything. God can get glory. I seen him the other day. and I, He went down the driveway and I texted him. I hadn't texted him in a while. And I said, boy, you still look good. And he said, I've aged more in the last three weeks than I have in 30 years. 
That's what he told me. You see, God knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. And if I can get it in your mind tonight to get your mind thinking in the right way instead of, amen, being the accused one, instead of being the, the one that everybody hates and the one that everybody's against and always feeling sorry for yourself and always walking around with your head down in your lap, you may raise your head and boldly say, the Lord is my help. And I will trust in God at all times. Amen. Well, anybody got anything you want to say tonight? That's right. Amen. Amen. Amen.